communication for effective functioning to communicate means to create a common understanding communication is an important aspect of human behavior it is necessary for people to communicate opinions feelings information and ideas to others to retain and spoken form body language or signs communication is an integral part of life from birth till death every living being is communicating in his or her own way be in be in birds animals trees or human beings if seen from an organizational point of view communication is the most essential con- component of an organization in fact it is impossible to form an organization without communication an organization is a group of individuals who aim at achieving specific objectives proper coordination of human efforts with an organization is required to achieve these objectives an effective system of communication in the organization is required for coordination and integration of various human activities communication helps in exchange of information and ideas it is communication which gives life to the organization so it is rightly known as the life blood the blood of an organization communication to inform tell show or spread information process a systematic series of actions operation of series of changes directed to some end sender person who initiates the communication process receiver the targeted audience of the messages decoding the act of translating symbols used in communication to their ordinary meanings source the originator of an idea or a message message the stimulus that a source transmits to a receiver receiver the person for whom the message is intended formal channel of communication as a means of communication that is formally controlled by managers or people who occupy positions in a organization downward communication communication that flows from top to bottom is known as downward communication next diagonal communication includes the flow of information between people at different levels who have no direct reporting relationships next objective a goal that one desires to achieve or accomplish through his or her efforts interpersonal communication a collection of processes we use to interrelate with other people and they are a considerable component of the relationship building process observation an activity of a living being such as a human which consists of receiving acquaintance of the outside world through the senses or the recording of information using scientific instruments presentation a live mode of sharing information with a select audience business communication can also be referred to as workplace communication it comprises of the process of sharing any business related messages as stated by the wisconsin school of business the necessity for communication to be efficient in business has undergone many evolutions over the years since the empowerment of workers has increased in organizations
Communication takes place between a sender and a receiver. There may be one or more senders and one or more receivers. A process by definition or simple explanation is a systematic series of actions, operation of series of changes directed to some end. Communication is never a one-way process because it comprises of exchange and progression of ideas towards a mutually acceptable direction or goal. Various elements involved in the process of communication are broadly grouped into five. Number one, source. Number two, message. Number three, channel. Number four, receiver. And number five, effect. Communication can be classified according to the number of people and medium employed. Communication is important as we use it for networking, spreading ideas, and promotions. Communication must be effective for any organization. Everything that is significant for the organization in any form, be it letters, memorandums, reports, any medium that may be used, it should be made effective by following certain guideline, guidelines and principles. Organizational communication increases our awareness of all that is happening around us, is a benchmark of how one succeeds in an organization, enhances one's degree of understanding and efficiency. There are many blocks and distortions to effective communication. Due to such barriers, messages may not reach the intended receiver or they may be flaws in encoding and decoding the messages. The fundamental skills for effective interpersonal relationships are number one, listening skills, number two, assertive skills, number three, skills for skills of joint problem solving. For communication to be effective, it is important to have commendable writing skills. Good writing skills take a long time and considerable practice to develop. Make sure that you have sufficient time to practice. Public speaking is the method of addressing a group of individuals in an organized and purposeful way with the aim, aim of notifying, influencing, or entertaining the listeners. It is closely linked with presentation. True presentation is more commercially inclined. Though, commerce, though presentation is more commercially inclined. Presentation skills involves ideas, concepts, or issues that are spoken about or conveyed to a group or an audience. Concept and definition of communication. The term communication has been derived from the Latin word communis, that means common and thus. If a person effects communication, he establishes a common ground of understanding. Literally, communication means to inform, tell, show, or spread information. Thus, it may be interpreted as an interchange of thought or information to bring about understanding and confidence for good industrial relations. It brings about unity of purpose, interest, and efforts in an organization. There are a number of definitions of the term communication. A few of them are as follows. Ellen Lewis said that communication is the sum of all things one person does when he wants to create understanding in the minds of another. It involves a systematic and Continuous process of telling, listening, and understanding. The transfer of information from one person to another, whether or not it elicits confidence. Wounds and O'Donnell. Communication is an exchange of facts, ideas, opinions, or emotions by two or more persons. 
Zor's theory. The process of passing information and understanding from one person to another. This is essentially a bridge of meaning between people. By using the bridge of meaning, a person can safely cross the river of misunderstanding. Kate, Kate Davis. Effective communication is purposive intersense, resulting in workable understanding and agreement between the sender and receiver of a message. George Vardaman. Communication is intersense of thoughts, opinions, and information by speech, writing, or science. Robert Anderson. Next, communication is the process by which information is passed between individuals and or organizations by means of previously agreed symbols. Peter Little. Next definition is. Communication is any behavior that results in an exchange of meaning. The American Management Association. Next definition. Communication may be broadly defined as the process of meaningful interaction among human beings. More specifically, it is the process by which meanings are perceived and understandings are released among human beings. The above definition is provided by D. E. McFarland. Next week is basic tenets of communication. To communicate means to give receive information via one or more than one channel. Therefore, communication is a joint process. Whether it is a formal exchange between colleagues taking up a seminar or mean assembly, writing of articles for newsletters or official report, the fundamental tenets that are applicable are as follows. Number one, get to know about the audience. Next, get to know about the purpose. Next, get to know the topic. Next, anticipation of objectives. Next, presentation of the complete picture. Next, being credible with the audience. Next, follow-ups. Next, communication in parts. Next, presentation of information in different ways. Next, build up a realistic and valuable way to get feedback. Next, employ numerous approaches of communication. Communicating is a complex activity. At the time of listening to or reading another person's message, it is the tendency of the reader to filter the message that he gets and incorporate his own opinions in it. What the principal obstacles to communication is the receiver's own thoughts and beliefs. Here one can visualize a, a very old game of communication known as telegraph which is played within a circle. A message is passed around from one person to the next in a tone of whisper. It is generally proved by the exercise that the message undergoes many profound changes as it experiences a continuous mystery presentation by every person who filters it by his own understanding. Next topic. Nature of communication. An inspection of the way in which communication is defined indicates that the following characteristics that give more clearly about communication. Number one. It is process. The term process has been defined as an identifiable flow of interrelated events moving over time towards some goal or an end. Accordingly, communication is a process in which there are some identifiable interrelated events which start with the sender. Then they move by encoding messages through some channel till the receiver receives the message and ends with the feedback. Number two, it is invaluable. Communication is essential physically, socially, and psychologically. If an individual is provided with all physical comforts but is not allowed to read, write, speak, 
and listen he will become mentally retarded number 3 meaning based communication is meaning based as has been very succinctly said by a specialist the most immediate need for communication is to be able to refer to things in the real world that is to be able to name things states events attributes using words in addition in addition we must be able to link words together so as to make meaningful sentences and language hence there is a need to be clear about what we want to say number 4 Communication is intentional as well as unintentional. While some communication is intended, that is, it is purposely done. Much of the communication may be unintentional. That is, we might convey in many ways, even what we do not wish to communicate. It is rightly said, we cannot not communicate. Number five. communication is systematic is constituent of communication is influenced by the other the one who sends the message the message itself and also the recipient of the message all are interconnected and influenced by each other number 6 a two way traffic a significant aspect of communication is involvement of at least two people that is a sender and a receiver in fact one person cannot communicate to himself a receiver is a must to complete the communication act there is no communication until the message sent by the sender has been received by the receiver a personal director may send hundreds of memos and warning letters to an employee but communication is not complete unless the employee receives and reads them since communication is an exchange of views opinions directions etc it is two way traffic the concept of two way can be understood in many ways it is not just the sender who is involved in communication but the receiver is also equally involved in the process in another way in an organization communication is both ways upwards as well as downward messages directives opinions etc are sent to lower levels in the management chain of command similarly grievances protests views sentiments viewpoints etc travel upward along the line of communication that is beginning from workers lowest level to the top management highest level Joel Steri has precisely co- commented as follows: Simply talking about talking or writing without regard to the recipient's response is conductive, conducive to misunderstanding. Therefore, communication should take place in both directions. Number seven, communication is a social process. Human being is a social animal. He cannot live in isolation. Communication is a process which helps the human being to interact and socialize. Hence, it is a social process. Eight, a dynamic process. Dynamic means ever changing. Communication is not a constant one-time event. It is a dynamic process which is changing all the time. Nine, continuous process. Communication is continuous in nature. More often than not, it is repeated for achieving the desired results. It is an ongoing process in which one interaction is followed by the other. Number ten, communication is interaction as well as transaction. People exchange ideas and information through communication. In this process, they influence each other as well. Number eleven. It is spiraling process. Communication between the receiver and the sender usually does not start at the same level or goes at the same rate. 
it is due to difference in abilities of the sender as well as the receiver moreover noise and time have an impact on it as a result communication takes a spiral shape before it is completed and reaches the receiver the same level and space 12 it is contextual communication happens with reference to a context the same words would mean different things if they are said in different contexts hence meaning may differ in different situations number 13 requires to be understood correctly there may be several media for communicating but the chief reason to convey the message is for creating a correct understanding of the message in the of the receiving party due to this it should be clear and concise in its words 14 gives rise to the accomplishment of the objectives of the organization effectual way of communicating does this by generating a feeling of object orientation within the organization number 15 dismiss misinterpretation in this context it gives clarity of understanding between people and hence brings about solidarity among people 16 it has four specific skills communication has four specific skills they are reading writing speech, speaking and listening go Seventeen. It is all pervasive, irrespective of the type and size of the organization. Communication is inevitable. It is important at all levels. It exists everywhere in an organization. With communication, it is possible to delegate authority, to coordinate activities, and to take managerial decisions. Number eighteen. It shares thoughts and ideas. which produce response thoughts and ideas which do not produce response do not come under the purview of communication number 19 it is the life blood of the business to business organization and no civil society no business organization and no civil society can exist survive and grow without the existence of effective communication network through communication people working in an organization get activated and involved in performing a variety of roles for achieving organizational goals various modes of communication are used for people outside the organization for knowing the existence products profits profit and progress of the organization communication process a process by definition or simple explanation is a systematic series of actions operation of series of senses directed to some end communication is never a one way process because it comprises of exchange and progression of ideas towards a mutually acceptable direction or goal it means therefore that in the process of communication two or more persons must participate through a medium that carries the information or message for a particular purpose mutually understood by both the sender and the receiver only when these conditions are fulfilled a significant communicative situation will take shape and transfer between the two parties that are the sender and the receiver whether spoken or written will be the communicative event any letter or report interview or conference memo or complaint is a communicative event 
the importance of these cognitive events cannot be overemphasized they are the very lifeline of any organization for the communication process to take place it is essential to identify the basic components of communication these components are as follows number 1 sender or encoder or speaker number 2 receiver or decoder or listener number 3 message number 4 medium number 5 feedback number 1 sender or encoder or speaker the person who initiates the commission communication process is normally referred to as the sender he is the person who transmits speaks or communicates a message and is the one who conceives and initiates the message with the purpose of informing or persuading or influencing or changing the attitude opinion or behavior of the receiver or audience or listener from this personal data bank he selects ideas encodes and finally transmit them to the receiver the entire burden of communication then depends on the sender or encoder in this process a number of factors come into action primary among them being an understanding of the recipient and his needs if the message can be formulated in accordance with the expectations of the receiver the level of acceptance is going to be higher number 2 receiver or decoder or listener a receiver is the targeted audience of the message the receiver gets the message understands interprets and tries to perceive the total meaning of the message as transmitted by the sender he receives an encoded message which attempts to decode this process is carried on in relation to the work environment and the value perceived in terms of the work situation if the goal of a sender is envisioned as similar to his own the listener becomes more part receptive the decoding of the message is done in almost entirely the same term as were intended by the sender number 3 message it is information written or spoken which is to be sent from person to another the most important characteristics characteristic of a message as an element of communication is that it is organized structured shaped and selective a product of pre writing or pre speaking stage it exists in the mind of the sender communicator that is message is the encoded idea transmitted by the sender the formulation of the message is very important for an incorrect patterning and can turn the receiver hostile or make him lose interest at this stage the sender has to be extremely cautious what is the order in which he would like to present his ideas in this case the manner in which the message should be formulated and the ordering transmitted as stated earlier should be based on the requirements of the listener so that its significance is immediately grasped the minute the receiver finds his goals codified in the message he sits up listens and responds the message does has an impact number 4 medium or channel another important element of communication is the medium or channel this is vehicle or medium which facilitates the sender to convey the message to the receiver it could be oral written or non verbal prior to the composition of the message the medium or channel should be decided each medium follows its own set of rules and regulations for example in oral communication one can afford to little informal but when using the 
written mode all rules of communication need to be observed it must be remembered that anything in writing is a document that would be filled for records or circulated to all concerned number 5 feedback this is the top loop that connect connects the receiver in the communication process with the sender who in turn acts as a feedback receiver and thus gets to know that communication has been accomplished it also ensures that the receiver has received the message and understood it is as intended by the sender this is the most significant constant of the communication process communication is effective only as of a feedback the mistakes and faults that are bound to happen in a commercial scenario are only because of the absence of feedback here we consider the characteristic responses of people who have been part of miscommunication i had not meant this or i had not said this or this was not intended by me if feedback is asked for in a hard case this problem can be reduced to a minimum level or it can also be totally removed the causes for deceptive testimonials or faulty inferences are absence of confirmation through feedback and consistency between the message transmitted and the truth has been understood the process of feedback assures the initiator of the action about its correctness and possible impact the various elements of communication communication are briefly described to help one in understanding the process of communication besides these two elements there are two more terms to be understood in the process of communication number 1 encoding encoding is sending the message from its mental form into symbols that is patterns of words or gestures or pictorial forms or signs physical or of sounds of a specific visual or oral language number 2 decoding this is the act of translating symbols used in communication to their ordinary meanings however the total meanings would consist of meanings of the words or symbols together with the tone and the attitude of the sender as reflected by the structure of the message and the choice of words used by him that means the sender in management the decision making process is greatly supported by receiving feedback from those who are directly concerned with any changes proposed or effected and communicated to them next working of the communication process one way process the sender according to his ideas behavior pattern and intention selects a message next he then encodes the message after encoding the message he transmits it to the receiver through a medium which can be oral verbal or non verbal as soon as the message reaches the receiver he decodes it and gives an internal response to the perceived message it is not it is not what he did the response is not in relation to the actual content but rather to the perceived content of the original message this completes the first phase of the communication process the manner in which the sender and receiver perceive the same word could give rise to difference in encoding and decoding the last step completes the one way process of communication next two way process one way communication process is incomplete as the sender does not come to know whether the receiver has been able to understand his message or not the process will be complete only after the sender receives feedback from the receiver 
in the second phase the receiver forwards his message encodes it and transmits it to the original sender now turned receiver this stage is referred to as providing feedback and is most crucial if the feedback is in tune with the original intent of the sender the communication will proceed without a hitch however there could be moments when the receiver does not agree with the message of the sender this does not mean that there is breakdown of communication we can in such instances state that effective communication is caught up for the time being it could resume after subsequent discussions there are certain parameters which are important for communication to be successful the sender of the message should have a definite goal in his mind a harmonious progression between the targets of the two people involved in the process of communicates a favorable and simple environment for the growth of ideas and concepts irrespective of the preliminary state of affairs it is important for the sender to hold on to the following stages number 1 make the receiver aware of the topic number 2 recommend his point of view very clearly and precisely so as to reduce the probability of uncertainty in the mind of the receiver number 3 facilitate smooth flow of conversation by practicing strategic way of communication number 4 consolidate or correct ideas in the receiver's mind of the concerned the goal of communication number 5 accomplish the objective of communication at the time of transmitting and receiving the message all our five senses become significantly involved in absorbing its purpose the logic that is principally dynamic at a certain stage helps the extent of absorption on a more active scale For instance, within the process of the communicating, if the visual intellect at a specific point of time is extremely vigorous, the response is a reaction to only visual cues. Elements, principles, and types of communication. First, elements of communication. Various elements involved in communication process are broadly grouped into number 1 source number 2 message number 3 channel number 4 receiver and number 5 effect a discussion of this follows number 1 source the source is the originator of an idea or a message it may also be known as the sender who may be an individual or a group of or a group though ultimately it is an individual who might be acting the role on behalf of a group the source conceives the idea prepares the message selects the channel and decides about the receiver number 2 message it refers to the stimulus that a source transmits to a receiver it is what communication is all about when the message symbols etc is converted into a certain meaning it is known as decoding decoding is done by the receiver the message should be clearly worded so that it is easily understood by the receiver number 3 channel the message travels from the source to the receiver through a particular particular channel the channel can be mass media not mean for any particular individual such as newspapers radio tv etc or interpersonal modes mean for a particular individual such as telephone correspondence etc selection of the channel depends on the message to be conveyed availability of the channel cost of channel effectiveness of the channel etc number 4 receiver The receiver is the person for whom the message is intended. 
He is the single most important element in the communication process. If the receiver is not able to comprehend the message, the communication becomes ineffective. Number five, effect. Effect is the sense in the behavior of the receiver. Occurring in response to the message received, the receiver may not pay attention to the message or simply store the information received or act according to the wishes of the source. Next, principles of communication. The following principles can be followed to make the communication system more effective. Number one, principle of clarity. Number one, principle of clarity. The idea or the message to be transmitted should be clearly worded so that it may be interpreted by the receiver in the same sense in which it is communicated. There should be no ambiguity in the message. For this purpose, the idea to be communicated should be very clear in the mind of the sender. It should be kept in mind that the words do not speak themselves. But, but, but the speaker gives them meaning. If the message is clear, it would evoke an appropriate response from the other party. It is also necessary that the receiver must be conversant with the language. The inherent assumptions and the mechanics of communication. Number two, principle of integrity. Communication should be aimed at motivating people to take action, as agreed upon. In this process, the superiors rely on the subordinates and are under assumption that their integrity is unimpeachable. This is because the integrity of the organization is related to the level of integrity possessed by the subordinates. No communication may evoke a response from the subordinates if their integrity is doubted. The superiors should trust the subordinates, accept their viewpoints and never doubt their intention in executing the tasks entrusted to them. Number three, principle of informality. Formal communication system is cornerstone of a formal organization and it leads to transmission of messages. But sometimes formal communications prove ineffective in evoking the needed response from the subordinates. In such cases, the superiors should adopt the strategy of making use of informal channels of communication. They may contact, if necessary, the subordinates personally or through someone else to persuade them to translate their orders into action. Informal communication at times proves more effective than formal communication. Number four, principle of attention. In order to make the message effective, the recipient's attention should be drawn to the communicated message. Each one is different in behavior, sentiments, and emotions, which determine the degree of attention. For this purpose, the superior must not must note that he himself should not expect from his subordinates what he himself does not practice. So, a manager cannot enforce punctuality if he himself is not punctual. Action speaks louder than words. Number 5. Principle of Consistency This principle implies that communication should always be consistent with the policies, plans, programs, and objectives of the organization and not in conflict with them. Messages which are inconsistent with the policies and plans of the organization create confusion in the minds of the subordinates about their implementation and such a situation may prove detrimental to the organization's health. Number six, principle of adequacy. The information should be adequate and complete in all, aspect, all respects. Inadequate and incomplete information may delay action and destroy understanding and create confusion. Inadequate information also affects the efficiency of the sender and the receiver of the commission. Number seven, principle of timeliness. All messages should be transmitted at the proper time. Any delay in communicating message 
serves no purpose except to make it merely a historical document as it loses its importance after some time. Number 8. Principle of Feedback One of the most important principles of communication is the principle of feedback. The communicator must have feedback information from the recipient to know whether the recipient has understood the message in the same sense in which the sender has sent it or whether the subordinates agree or disagree with the content of the message. It also helps in understanding the attitude of the people. Number 9. Principle of Communications Network Communications network means the routes through which the communication travels to its destination. That is the person for whom it is meant. A number of such networks may exist, exist in an organization at a given point of time, but the management should consider the effectiveness of the communications network in the given situation and its effects on the behavior of the recipient before it finally suggests the network. The above principles, if followed, will make the communication effective. An organization should use an effective system of communication to promote good industrial relations. These are the principles of communication that can be followed to make the communication system more effective. Next topic is types of communication. We classify communication according to the number of persons receivers to whom the message is addressed. Classification according to the number of persons. Number one, intrapersonal communication. Number two, interpersonal communication. Number three, group communication. And number four, mass communication. Intrapersonal communication. It is talking to oneself in one's own mind. Examples are soliloquies, soliloquies or essays in dramatic works. Interpersonal communication. It is the exchange of messages between two persons. For example, a conversion, conversation, dialogue, or an interview in which two individuals interact may also have other present as audience. An author's communication with his reader is interpersonal, such that the reader is always present as a silent audience in the author's mind while he writes. A letter to is an example of interpersonal communication between the writer and the person to whom it is written. Group communication. It can be between small and large groups, like an organization, club or classroom, where all individuals retain their individual identity. Mass communication. It occurs when the message is sent to large groups of people, for example, through newspapers, radio or television. In this process, each person becomes a faceless individual with almost no opportunity for personal response or feedback. Communication can also be classified on the basis of the medium employed. Classi <coughs> classified on the basis of the medium. Number one, verbal communication, that is further divided into oral communication and written communication. Second, non-verbal communication. Third, meta communication. Fourth, formal communication. Fifth, informal communication. Sixth, downward communication. Seventh, upward communication. Eighth, diagonal communication. Verbal communication. It means communicating with written or spoken words. It involves listening, speaking, writing, reading, and thinking. It may further be classified as oral or written communication. Next is non-verbal communication. It includes use of sign, signs, pictures, facial expressions, and gestures in order to exchange information. It is done through sign language, 
action language or object language. Nonverbal communication flows through all aspects of speaking or writing. It is a wordless message conveyed through gestures, sign, movements, action language, and object language, pictures, clothes, and so on. Further, nonverbal communication can be identified by personal space, proxemics, sense of smell, olfactics, and time, chronemics. Next is meta communication. Here, the speaker's choice of words unintentionally unintentionally communicates something more than what the actual words state for example a flattering remark like i have never seen you so smartly dressed would also mean that the regular editor of the listener needed improvement formal communication a formal channel of communication can be defined as a means of communication that is formed that is formally controlled by managers or people who occupy positions in an organization the communication flows through formal channels that are officially recognized positions along the line in the organization this ensures that the information flows orderly timely and accurately any information decision memo remainder etc will follow this path next is informal communication side by side with the formal channel of communication every organization has an equally effective channel of communication that is the informal channel it is not officially sanctioned and quite often it is even discouraged or looked down upon but then it is very much there and has been given the name grapevine precisely because it ruins in all direction and directions horizontal vertical diagonal as the management experts put it it flows around water coolers down hello hallways through lunch rooms and wherever people get together in groups next is downward communication the communication that flows flows from top to bottom is known as downward communication any organization has an inbuilt hierarchical system and in that in the first instance communication invariably flows downwards next is upward communication the communication that flows from bottom to top which is from lower hierarchical level to higher level is called upward communication the primary purpose of upward communication is to pass on information to the upper levels it is done to inform the upper level as to what is happening at the lower levels it is just the reverse of the previous dimension next is lateral lateral communication when two or more individuals communicate with each other who are subordinates working under the same person or those who are working on the same level it is called lateral or horizontal communication a good example of this kind of communication is that between functional managers it is necessary for the review of the activities assigned to various subordinates having identical positions next is diagonal com communication diagonal or crosswise communication includes the flow of information between people at different levels who have no direct reporting relationships as an example the communication between the trading supervisor and marketing manager regarding the training of a few employees of the marketing department is diagonal communication this kind of communication is used to speed up the flow of information to improve understanding and to coordinate efforts for the achievement of organizational objectives objectives purpose and scope of communication first objectives and purpose of communication an objective is a goal that one desires to achieve or accomplish 
through his or her efforts. It is the reason behind undertaking an activity. When we are speaking or writing to our friends, it is probable that a certain cause is not existent other than the desire to be in contact. To be friends at the time of chatting with a group of friends. Socialization is the simple want, being friendly or expressing oneself, but in an official or commercial scenario. At the time of speaking, listening or writing to our customers, our subordinates or our superiors, we have a certain purpose or objective. It is our desire to achieve something. Communication could have many objectives depending on the context and number of people involved. Communication within a family, in a classroom, in a theater, in a seminar, in a boardroom, and in the organization has different objectives. The objectives depend upon the purpose to be achieved. The objectives of communication would include the following. First, to inform. This is the foremost objective of communication. Information is power. The information needs within and outside the organization can be met through communication. Next, to persuade. Business work can be achieved through persuasion. It is important to persuade employees to work efficiently. To persuade customers to buy our product and so on. The objective of communication may be to persuade. Next objective is to educate, to disseminate knowledge and develop skills and attitudes among people working in the organization may be another objective of communication. Next, to train. Communication is an integral part of any training program. Training is required to achieve proficiency in specific skills, instruction, instruction, demonstration, practice and discussion during training require communication as an integral part. Next, to motivate, high level of moral and motivation are a must to ensure high levels of productivity and efficiency on a sustainable basis. Communication provides a means to keep motivation levels high. Next is to integrate. Large business organizations have different business units, departments, and territorial divisions pursuing different targets. Communication provides the means for an integrated approach in pursuing organizational goals. Organizational goals. Next is to relate. Good business relations are a must for the continued success of any business organization. Communication provides the means for building and nurturing mutually beneficial relationships. Next, to entertain. Whatever be the nature of business, there is always time for entertainment. Communication facilitates social bonding and brings lighter moments that help in entertainment and relieving tension. The objectives of communication are dynamic and ever-changing. A few of the popular goals of formal commission are to receive or transmit information, to instruct or to be instructed, or advise or, advise or suggest, to request, to persuade other people to come to a common agreement. At times, the intention of communication is to complain or warn, but it is unfortunate that this is done in anger and by arguing with people. If we get into the act of complaining and warning in a way that is acceptable and positive, it becomes easy to convey our serious purpose in an effective way without causing any damage to relationships. For the purposes of cautioning, counseling, clarifying, appraising, evaluating, reprimanding, and organizing, and different types of objectives, communication can be used for this purpose.
scope of communication. Communication has unlimited scope. The scope of communication can be understood under two headings. Number one, external dimension. Number two, internal dimension. External dimension. External dimension regarding communication has a bigger arena. It includes building relations with external agencies and stakeholders. Effective communication can establish a healthy external organizational climate in which there is trust, cooperation, collaboration, innovation, and commitment. Self-involvement of people in various activities is inculcated to create vibrant and congenial atmosphere. Likewise, depending upon how an organization looks after its advertisements, publicity, and public relations function, public image and goodwill of the organization is created through effective communication. Next is internal dimension. A lot of communication takes place within the organization. In an organization starting from the starting from formulating corporate vision, mission policy objectives, taking goals to their implementation, communication plays a significant role for formulating policies Top management needs to obtain information and views of the middle and lower level management through various forms, especially for the appropriate implementation of the top management policies and plans. It is only communication which facilitates proper understanding of the policies in the right spirit. Public relations as a management function solely depend on right communication. There are different functions to be performed by various functional departments to keep the organization running. Within each department and across different departments, functional heads have to communicate to their subordinates by giving job-related instructions, suggestions, advice and orders for obtaining and giving cooperation to other departments. Exchange of information plays a key role. When we look at each functional department, the scope of communication further becomes clear. For example, in the case of social work practice, the social worker needs to take care of communication to avoid grievance, dissatisfaction, and industrial unrest in the entire organization. Communication skill is essential for social worker to design the right advertisement copies conduct effective, net, effective interviews, arrange for better training programs, programmers, etc. In addition to external and internal dimensions, the scope of communication may be looked at as follows. Number one, includes oral and non-verbal communication. Next, interpersonal, intrapersonal and mass communication. Next, covers only human communication. Next, covers four skills reading writing speaking and listening importance functions and effectiveness of communication communication plays a vital role in every walk of life according to Luthans, some estimates of the extent of its use go up to about three-fourths of an active human being's life and even higher proportions of a typical manager's time. The world is changing fast and with it, every organization is becoming more and more sophisticated. So first of all, communication has to be given due recognition as an integral part of process change. Whenever a change in the direction of technology, structure or objectives takes place, it becomes easier with the help of communication. The significance of communication ca can be judged from the functions performed by it. Following are the important functions of communication. Number 1. Information sharing. The prime objective of communication is the transmitting of information from a source to the target individuals or groups. Different categories of information are transmitted within the organization. These include policies, 
transformation and growth in the organization etc it may be required to diffuse some of the information first within the organization for example gifting of exclusive prizes and awards negotiations with the union and significant alterations within the organization number 2 feedback it is a very important activity to provide feedback to the employees on the basis of their accomplishments to the entire unit on the basis of its performance and to the top management for achieving its goals difficulties come across in the communication of feedback in taking corrective measures and making necessary adjustments and they motivate people in developing challenging and realistic plans number 3 influence power comes from information one objective of communication is to affect the mindset of people the manager communicates for creating a better atmosphere positive outlook and amiable working rapport all these are examples of influencing number 4 problem solving in a large number of cases the process of communicating aims to solve problems when the management and the union communicate or negotiate on some matters of concern their aim is to find solutions for those problems and to evolve a consensus number 5 assist in decision making the most important function of every manager is decision making in order to make accurate and appropriate decision a manager needs to update information available within various channels of communication here the way decision is communicated will have an impact upon the results of the organization in terms of cooperation and support of the people to achieve the goals of the organization for coming upon a decision different ways of communicating are required for example transfer of information stances and accessible options etc communication is helpful on a large scale in this in the process of decision making number 6 bringing about a sense the efficacy of a sense that has been brought about within an organization is largely dependent on how clear and spontaneous the communication is when managers and employees communicate the process helps to recognize the problems that could occur in the planned alteration and the occurrence of corrective measures number 7 group construction the activity of communication is helpful for building relationships if communication breaks down the groups may disintegrate communication provides the necessary lubrication for the proper functioning of a group number 8 gatekeeping communication helps in building an association of the organization with the external world the organization can make optimum utilization of its environment for increasing its rate of success number 9 sending across the correct message the main aim to communicate is to transmit the correct message to the target person or group that means that is to a person or group who is supposed to receive the message the message that is sent across has to be well comprehended clearly and acknowledged by the receiver in the right point of view in other words the meaning with which the message has been sent across should not change when the receiver accepts it its translation into action should be effective and correct number 10 helps in coordination of effort communication is very significant at the time of coordination of activities of the different people who are involved in commercial activity it remotely puts or almost impossible to coordinate without communicating in organizations there exist a large number of differences which are many a times formally created by an organization to 
two departments divisions delegation decentralization authority and power these differences can minimized and properly coordinated to achieve organizational goals with the help of various effective communication mechanisms like letters circulars meetings conferences telephone cellular phones etc the persons or groups become aware of the activities and responsibilities of others and they know what they can expect only with the help of communicating with others number 11 good industrial relations communication helps in developing sound industrial relationships as it transmit the way of thinking beliefs views and perspectives of one group to the other groups both the groups the management and the employees form an association with the help of communication this understanding with each other is good and any misunderstanding can be dismissed hence it includes collaboration and good industrial liaisons number 12 advancements of management skills communication is helpful to managers for understanding how humans behave at work when facts concepts viewpoints feelings etc are communicated the give additional value to the skills of the managers pertaining to different scenarios and situations within the organization and the attitude of the people does to communicate good to communicate means also to learn number 13 ensuring effectiveness of policies the organization formulates policies and programs to guide the workforce this should be conveyed properly to those who are really responsible for the execution of work to achieve the organization objectives only effective communication can trans- translate the policies into action effectiveness of the policies can be judged from the success which surely depends upon effective communication system number 4 motivating people if people working in the organization are not regularly informed about their management's expectations plans and policies with respect to their future career and growth promotion and welfare measures they feel frustrated and demotivated to various communication devices managers declare rewards and incentives to motivate employees number 15 performance feedback people working in an organization need to how well they are performing and what needs to be done to achieve and exceed the standards set by management through measures like letter of application or suggestion the subordinates are given a feedback about the performance status number 16 job instruction managers need to communicate to their subordinates the job instructs in terms of requirements of the job from time to time failure on the part of managers in communicating these instructions may lead to confusion wastes and inefficiency in an organization number 17 controlling people every organization has its own rules regulations and procedures framed by the management in order to perform various activities to regulate the behavior of people therefore an organization issues notices circulars letters etc to communicate to communicate the existing or change rules regulations and procedures the management information system is very popularly seen as a form of control methodology messages are conveyed to make sure that plans are being executed successfully in accordance with the original design communication is helpful to ensure this kind of control number 18 useful as grapevine informal communication or grapevine in organizations sometimes leading to rumors is often used by employees to create misunderstanding but sometimes management also takes the help of this route to assess the impact and reaction of employee before introducing proposed policies and changes in the organization 
Number 19. Emotive function. Communication facilitates the expression of feelings and satisfaction. It also enables the people to express their dissatisfaction and unhappiness through words or in writing to release their tension and frustration. That is why in organizations there exist grievance resolution machinery and often managers and supervisors are trained how to handle employees emotional problems and grievances next effectiveness of communication communication is not an end in itself rather it is a means to attain other ends or goals hence it has to be effective to be able to attain those goals or objectives Communication effectiveness can be examined in relation to the following criteria. Number one, fidelity of communication. The desertion free quality of a message is called fidelity. An effective person gets the message across to others with minimal possibilities of misunderstanding. Number two, economy. In effective communication, a minimum of energy time Symbols and cues are used to encode messages without losing its fidelity and impact. Number three, congruence. Effective communication inter integrates verbal and non-verbal cues. Number four, influence. The most vital criterion of effectiveness is the influence that the communicator is able to exercise for the receiver of the communication. Influence means the communicator achieved the results he intended number 5 relationship building effective communication contributes to the build, building of trust and better relationship between the source and the target organizational communication communication is the passing of information and understanding from one person to another at the same level or at different levels it is the process by which the management reaches out to others for managing its work. Since managers work through others, all of their managerial functions pass through the bottlenecks of communication. One person can initiate the process, but he alone cannot complete it. It is completed only when it is received by others. The effectiveness of management largely depends upon the effectiveness of communication. It is communication which gives life to the organization. So it can be related with the lifeblood of an organization. The communication system serves as the vehicle by which an organization is embedded in its environment. It not only integrates the various subunits of an organization, but also, in a systematic sense, serves as an elaborate set of interconnected channels designed to shift and analyze information important from the environment. It also exports processed information to the environment. The roles of communication become more critical as the organization grows in its size. Complexity and sophistication. So the system should be adjusted according to the needs of the organization from time to time. Communication keeps the members of the organization aware about the internal and external condition of the organization. It is done in order to ensure that organizational objectives are achieved. An organization cannot function without communication. Next, information to be communicated in an organization. To reduce the senses of this information by the grapevine, an organization keeps all its employees informed about a number of facts of the organization. The content of the information is generally a mixture of fact, opinion, attitudes, and interpretation. Broadly, all personal communication can be divided into five types of information. Number one, statutory information. The information such as terms and conditions of service are to be communicated to all employees as a statutory document. Number two, regular work situation. 
the information regarding normal work situation has to be regularly communicated through routine formal briefing session or through informal such sessions between the manager and the group members his or her colleagues number 3 major policy or operational sense information any major sense in the organization policy or work which is going to affect everyone or a large number of employees has to be communicated to everyone by calling special meetings or by using notices to be read by all number 4 information bulletin to keep people informed about events and happenings taking place in the organization periodic information in the form of a newsletter is communicated to all employees of the company this information creates a sense of environment in the employees in which is important for the working of the organization number 5 communication by expectancy information of critical changes should be carefully and gradually communicated to those who are going to be directly affected by the decision before a decision is taken and implemented the people concerned must be mentally prepared for the event involving their representative or head in the very process of decision making can do this this process is to create expectancy in the receivers who would be less shocked by the negative communication and its eventuality next importance of communication in effective functioning communication skills constitute an important aspect of effective management managing is a complex process in simple terms it can be described as the organization of capital labor and material to achieve production and distribution of particular goods or services first the management fixes its objectives what to do and from its policy on how to do it then there has to be a system to which the production and distribution process can be guided coordinated and controlled to ensure that the management operations are led and coordinated and they result in feedback managing is a unified organized and cooperative system committed to the achievement of common goals the sense of unity of purpose and commitment to a single organizational goal can be developed only through the inspiring and persuasive power of communication to be able to do so a manager needs to have communication skills of a high order to structure the information according to its negative or affirmative nature and to frame words and tones according to purpose of the communication the manager should be able to create a desired relationship with audience or workers to produce the needed response communication also plays a vital role in training and development programs the standards of performance are also required to be properly and clearly communicated for advising employees so that the employees understand what they need to do and subsequently employees also need feedback about their performance in case the hr manager fails to properly communicate the performance outcome result it will cause emotional problems dissatisfaction and low morale among employees communications is also essential for explaining disciplinary rules and procedures and their proper implementation a human resources manager needs to have good negotiation skills to arrive at an agreement during the collective bargaining process to overcome obstacles which may arise in the negotiation process it is also required for fostering effective effective participative and collaborative work culture in the organization proper suggestions opinions and recommendations of employees are transmitted through communication in an organization communication has direct link with motivation moral absenteeism and productivity of the employees a leader's success or failure depends upon how well he communicates his plans visions vision and ideas to his followers does a whole lot of strategies parable of 
effective communication from an important part of management as a discipline. Next, why social work practitioner need communication skills? To a large extent, the success of an organization depends upon the atmosphere in which there is a free flow of information upward, downward, and horizontally. At the workplace, we primarily think of getting things done. For these instructions and guidelines, supervision and monitoring and periodic reporting are usually considered enough. But if we were to achieve more than the set task, a real involvement of all the employees from the highest to the lowest levels is to be secured by allowing every level of worker or employee to suggest or offer ideas, views, and experiences. Such a system of communication can be evolved and established within the organization only by the manager. In fact, the manager functions as a point of intersection of all communication channels. One of the important concerns of the manager is to organize and ensure that an effective information system is in place across the organization. As analyzed by Henry Minzberg of MIT, managers need effective communication skills to perform the following interrelated roles. Now, first, interpersonal, next, informational, next, decisional. The interpersonal role makes the manager act as a figurehead leader and liaison officer. The informational role makes the manager a supervisor, disseminator, and spokesperson. In a decisional role, the manager functions as entrepreneur, troubleshooter, resource allocator, and negotiator. Interpersonal role It is necessary to ensure the effective operation of the organization's system and to maintain proper relationships within the organization and with the outside clients, suppliers, and others. If interpersonal communication is effective, internal systems run smoothly. For example, personal functions within the organization require that as a manager, one inspires confidence, wins support, and guides his workers. A manager should be a role model for others. Develop the skill of patient listening. Create an atmosphere of mutual understanding and goodwill within the organization by transparent sharing of the organization's objectives, missions, and problems. Next, informational role. If the internal information system is if systems such as stock control, personal funds, financial systems, and quality control operate smoothly. Shortcomings and problems can be quickly identified and remedial action can be taken immediately. Proper maintenance of product and service standards can be ensured only through regular monitoring and instructing. Through effect interactive and informational communication and a strong feedback system, a high moral and Satisfaction can be secured among workers. Next, decisional role. Decision making is based upon receiving and interpreting all relevant and necessary information. Without having necessary information, decisions may turn out to be unrealistic and based on guesswork. Managers need to process Managers need to possess the skill of receiving relevant and latest information correctly and accurately to be able to take decisions and act rationally, fairly, and to the satisfaction of all concerned. All these functions require the manager to handle people and situations with the knowledge of human needs. Box and Distributions in Communication for ensuring effective communication, all the parties and instruments will have to play their part, part as envisaged 
at every step of the communication process however there are blocks and distortions which hinder or dilute the flow of communication the blocks and barriers to communication in an organizational context may arise out of authority structure status difference reporting relationships culture and background of individuals these may also arise out of behavioral differences differences in skills and understanding as well as physical factors while some kinds of barriers like behavioral differences and differences in skills may be commonly applicable to all methods of communication barriers arising out of physical factors may be specific to the method of communication adopted some blocks and distortions which are specific to written communication are handwriting spellings and legibility similarly blocks and distortions to oral communication would include absence of felicity of expression accent speed of delivery and appropriateness of the language number 1 poor expression the power of expression of the communicator determines the quality of communication to be effective the message has to be properly developed from an idea barriers relating to expression result in poorly expressed messages lack of conceptual skill results in inadequate or incomplete shaping of an idea lack of clarity ambiguity result from limited word power improper organization of ideas and lack of coherence efforts and thoughts are not organized properly communication would suffer for want of structural balance or a sense of proportion obviously such poor expression of thoughts and ideas leads to incorrect incomplete and incoherent messages all this would result in avoidable errors and seeking of further clarifications adding to cost and delays in communication encoding and decoding require skill to ensure clarity and precision poor expression is likely to occur under the following circumstances number 1 when a person is ill next when a person is fatigued next when a person is under severe stress next when a person is under the influence of alcohol these are true for both oral and written communication number 2 faulty trans- transmissions the process of transmission essential for any communication is susceptible to errors of omission and commission in the organizational context the person transmitting the message may be different from the person who conceived the idea the intent and purpose of the message may not remain the same as it moves from the originator to the transmitter not only that the person transmitting the message may bring in his own bias feelings and perceptions who is the originator of the message would not have intended there are occasions when the originator of the idea expects the transmitter to detail illustrate and elucidate the idea which the latter may fail to do number 3 indifference and lack of interest this is indeed a very strong barrier in the process of communication organizations have to make considerable effort to ensure that indifference to organizational communication is brought down to the minimum communication to be effective presupposes that the receiver of the message is also attentive or receptive attentive listening in oral communication careful reading in written communication and keen observation in nonverbal communication are a must 
indifference or lack of interest on part of the recipient in turn adversely impacts the enthusiasm of the communicator when students are not attentive the teacher is likely to lose interest on the other hand when the speaker lacks expertise or credibility the receptivity of the audience wanes indifference and lack of interest creates barriers to communication as a result of which the quality of communication suffers the intended message is either not received at all or is incomplete and worse still is understood incorrectly number 4 noise noise is another barrier especially relevant to verbal communication noise disturbs the flow of communication the recipient fails to receive the oral messages sent by the communicator as a result of which the message gets diluted while noise certainly affects oral communication it may also affect written communication to the extent that the person writing a letter or a report may lose his concentration and consequently flow of thoughts may suffer number 5 physical factors the process of communication especially transmission of messages makes use of numerous channels instruments and gadgets such as telephone microphone projector printing photocopying telex fax radio film cassette and of late the floppy all these very all these are very useful when they function smoothly at the same time they act as barriers when they fail to perform their functions efficiently as a result communication fails to reach the target audience snapping of telephone lines non availability of meeting rooms failure of mal equipment and disturbance of power supply may lead to delays in transmitting the messages to the intended recipients number 6 people related factors the process of communication essentially involves human beings like democracy we may describe communication as of the people for the people and by the people yet people do not think understand and interpret alike in other words meanings are in people in any large organization especially in ma- multinational ones there are differences among the employees in terms of language group cultural background rural urban origin hierarchical levels etc which in turn create psychological linguistic and cultural barriers differences in hierarchical positions have their implications in terms of work structure authority status and relationship in such situations people may have bias fear and reticence which act as barriers to the free flow of communication all these factors lead to different expectations among people within the organization as to who should communicate with whom and in what manner apart from this the organizational climate has its impact on communication it is conductive when people are encouraged to speak out and there is free flow of communication on the other hand when the organizational organizational climate is disturbed and when dissenting voices are stiffed barriers emerge you have seen that there are often numerous barriers to the free flow of communication such barriers disturb or dilute or hinder the process of communication these barriers may be classified as physical psychological linguistic and cultural it is worth emphasizing however that most barriers are surmountable it is possible to anticipate recognize and foresee the prevalence of barriers and take appropriate corrective action with conscious effort it is possible to overcome these barriers and 
ensure free flow of communication on an ongoing basis. Developing skills for effective interpersonal relationships. As you all know that interpersonal communication skills are a collection of processes we use to interrelate with other people and they are a considerable co component of the relationship building process. These interpersonal skills include transmitting coherent language in both oral and verbal form, reading written language produced by others and listening to others when they are transmitting information orally. These are the primary levels of interpersonal communication. The aptitude to excel at one or all levels dictates an individual's adeptness at interpersonal communication. Interpersonal skills are developed and improved over time and despite considerable academic research are typically difficult skills to perfect. By communicating with others, we share information and learn about other people, predominantly how they themselves communicate which is assimilated into how we ourselves communicate interpersonally with others. Interpersonal communication takes place all the time. When a soar is speaking to a store cashier, when a manager reviews a subordinate's performance, or when a salesman cold calls a client. Over and over again, the purpose of personal communication is to convey a message and establish a connection between sender and receiver. This allow, allows us to learn something about someone else, which consequently enhances our interaction with them in the future. One of the keys to effective interpersonal communication is trying to relate to the people we are interacting with and share something at a basic level. This sharing of, a, of interaction allows us to fulfill a need for inclusion in a social community, a need to demonstrate control over cognitive function and for affection and attention. Developing and leveraging these skills often takes training, practice and patience. Revealing something personal about ourselves to those around us builds trust and develops social relationship. Next, active listening is a key skill that includes paying attention to information being rela relayed to you, asking lots of questions, and monitoring your physical communication, such as eye contact and getting so enthusiasm in your demeanor and speech etc. This type of empathetic listening demonstrates interest in another person's point of view and establishes a connection. Providing constructive criticism without being overly critical can actually be done by demonstrating patience with someone whom you may differ in opinion with. Next, interpersonal communication often involves receiving and providing feedback, as well as handling con confrontation and, where necessary, conflict. In some cases, you may be subjected to complaint about a third party, where you must remain objective. Next, it is important to be skillful in finding a balance between not being pussy and not being a pushover, a manageable level of assertiveness. Next, be cognizant of physical communication ticks, hands, soldiers, feet getting, hair trailing. The development of interpersonal communication skills never ceases and during each and every conversation, an individual is forced to analyze verbal and non-verbal communication. Next, listening, observation, appropriate language, facilitation and responding. Listening is very essential for all of us since it gets since it gives us the ability to increase our effectiveness in our interpersonal relationships, get vital information, collect 
and collect information for making sound decisions and respond responding suitably to the messages that are received at the time of listening to others it is important to listen to the complete meaning which comprises of both the substance and the approach or feelings fundamental to the content thus even though it may look as if no effort is going into listening there is the cognitive mental aptitude to develop information with a speed that is three to four times quicker than the speed with which people talk this requires a deeper level of attentiveness and dedication to the listening process listening does not only only comprise of hearing a message hearing is limited to being the physical aspect of the process of listening it is a stress free unreceptive and physical work that requires little or no effort of the mind or will therefore one can possibly hear sounds for instance recorded music etc at the same time one can concentrate on other jobs as well for hearing to take place effectively and in the right manner the following three events should take place first the receiver should be able to segregate the sounds in the correct way next the sounds should be placed in the order of significance so that it becomes easy to convert them into words next the identification of words should be designed to form a language which can then be useful in conveying the message that has been communicated across with the help of an array spoken and unspoken signals listening exhibits that the information that has been received has been understood first how does one make sure that people are aware that their views have been taken into account next is there a time when your dynamic listening capabilities actually paid off what are the circumstances what did you get next what efforts have you put in for the improvement your listening skills next visualizing a specific scenario while presenting complex information how does one make sure that the message given by the other person understood think about a latest triumphant practice of making a speech or presentation what kind of pre preparation done what were the obstacles that came came up how were they handled next consider an instant when you were specifically effective in a speech you give you gave what was done differently to make it effective do's and don'ts for active listening guidelines pay attention do turn towards the speaker look directly at the speaker lean towards the speaker maintain eye contact with them while they are talking don't don't be distracted by your email phone calls or other external signals don't try to multitask and complete other jobs while listening next guideline use non verbal cues do use your own body language to signal your interest and attention nod your head smile or make other appropriate facial expressions don't don't fold your arms over your chest or clench your hands don't turn turn away from the speaker next guidelines give feedback do paraphrase the speaker's ideas summarize what he or she says refer to notes to ask questions and details don't don't be critical or argumentative in your feedback don't be afraid to disagree but resist dis dismissing a message because you do next guideline ask questions do 
clarify point or vague ideas. Demonstrate you are carefully considering a speaker's message. Use open-ended questions to elicit more information. Use simple close-ended questions for quick clarification. Don't don't ask questions in a hostile manner. Don't afraid to ask dumb or obvious questions. Next guideline. Be open-minded. Do. Allow the speaker to finish thoughts. Wait to respond until a speaker is finished talking. Don't. Don't focus on your own questions, problems and goals. Don't interrupt the speaker. Next guideline. Respond. Do. Provide appropriate responses. Be candid and honest. Maintain an attitude of respect. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. Don't don't criticize the other person. Don't belittle their point of view. Alternatively, listening is a mental and dynamic process and thus it is partially not practical to perform other tasks efficiently at the same time. Hearing incorporates two steps which are in addition to those the process of listening. They are be attentive to what is spoken. Next, try to understand what is being said. Observation is an activity of a living being, such as a human, which consists of receiving acquaintance of the outside world through the senses or the recording of information using scientific instruments. The term may also refer to any data collected during this activity. An observation can also be the way you look at things or when you look at something. Human observations are biased toward confirming the observer's conscious and unconscious expectations and view of the world. We see what we expect to see. Having good observation skill is an essential asset to people around the world and it is a skill that can be developed by practice. An observation skill test can help you in promptly identifying how well you have developed this skill in your life. Observation is a very unique skill that is not studied formally through books or lectures. Actually, it is acquired through the day-to-day -day routines of life. Having good observation skill is an essential asset to people around the world and it is a skill that can be developed by practice. Written communication skills, formal writing and creative writing. Written communication has come to acquire great significance in the lives of individuals as well as business organizations. It reaches out across vast geographic areas and targets readers around the world. Most businesses rely on records and written documents rather than on verbal co contracts and oral commitments. It is impossible to think of business or an organization without written communication. There are various reasons for this, namely, number one, in the first place, in large organizations, there are too many people to have face-to-face -face communication with. They are generally spread over high geographical distances and are sometimes not even connected by telephones. Though the situation is changing fast, but even then, exchange of letters remain an important component of communication. Number two, people have to function within defined limits of authority and responsibility. In the absence of written communication, it becomes difficult to fix responsibility. It therefore is an essential part of any manager's responsibility to communicate on paper. Next, methods of written communication. Written communication is an essential part of organizational life. Telephone, telex and fax machines have not in any way affected the 
importance of letters they have only changed the mode of transmission and made the access of letters or memos faster the most methods of then communication in an organization in an organization uh, first letters next memoranda notices minutes circulars as a manuals handbooks reports orders next inquiries complaints quotations next contracts and forms next topic characteristics of written communication number 1 most formal type of communication usually most of the informal casual conversation or friendly conversation is done orally when a body is need of formal communication it is the written mode that is preferred number 2 used for documentation written communication is mostly used for documentation in an organization documentation of records and decisions made from time to time are very important for which written communication comes handy number 3 use for circulation of information this is used for circulation of information in the organization written communication makes it possible to circulate information without distortions and misrepresentations number 4 conventional by nature there are not many rules of grammar for oral communication as there are for written communication written communication is conventional in the sense that it has to follow definite pattern as per rules laid down by the language number 5 presence of both sender and receiver is not necessary at the same time it is an important feature of written communication where the presence of just the sender or the receiver is sufficient at a given point of time point in time to continue the process of communication number 6 number 6 a creative activity written communication is essentially a creative activity which requires conscious and creative effort the creativity of this effort comes from the stimuli produced by the mind the stimuli of oral communication are picked up from outside by sensory receptors in other words written communication is more specifically more carefully thought out than oral communication it is based on spontaneous reaction to signs picked up from outside as an example let us take up the writing and production of a report that we want to present for this purpose we gather all the necessary information and data then we process it through our logical thought processes and encode our communication this is not a face to face communication situation there is no interchange of messages or external stimuli rather it is an entirely creative activity of the mind number 7 time factor number 7 time factor another salient feature of written communication is the time factor it involves while in a face to face communication situation the senders encoded messages are instantaneous instantly decided by the receiver in a written communications some delay necessarily take place there is no fixed time limit to delay the sender or encoder takes his own time in formulating the message which in turn takes quite some time to reach the receiver or decoder the receiver will take his own time in filtering in through his mind and responding to it number 8 it has fewer cycles written communication has fewer cycles than to face oral communication in oral communication there are multiple exchanges of symbols leading to multiple cycles most written communication is a one cycle event usually a message is sent and received and that is the end of the event of course letters do lead do lead to repeated cycles or communication exchanges
but they cannot be compared with the quick succession of cycles involved in a dialogue or informal meeting. Next topic advantages of written communication documentation of knowledge and experience facilitates in institutionalization of individual wisdom number one ready reference first and foremost written communication has the advantage of providing records references etc in the absence of ready reference lot of confusion may be created and the working of the organization will virtually come to a hat number two legal defense Maintenance of proper records, letters, reports, and memos builds up legal defenses of the organization. An organization is like a living organism, and like any organism, even an organization is vulnerable to offense, both from within and outside. Organizations usually have their legal advisors who cannot be of any help unless proper records are made available to them. Number three. Promotes uniformity. Written communication promotes uniformity in policy and procedure. It is the only means of laying down clear guidelines for working of the organization. Number four, mass access. Written communication give a, gives access to a large audience through mass mailing. It is a common practice on the part of a well-known organization to reach out to people at large and own customers through wisely drafted mail sorts or unsolicited circulars. For example, whenever a new brand of two-wheeler is introduced in the market or a bank comes forward with some attractive deposit or investment scheme, it succeeds in getting the names and addresses of all the members of an institution or organization who are offering them their services on easy terms. Number 5 suitable for distance communication written communication is most suitable when the receivers are spread over vast geographical areas and oral communication is either not possible or will cause the message to lose its effectiveness number six image building written communication builds up the organization's image it is not at all surprising therefore that the outgoing letters or messages of certain when known well-known companies are cited as examples to be emulated. Number seven, accurate and unambiguous. Written communication has the advantage of being accurate and unambiguous. Great care has to be taken in drafting a letter, memo, or report so that the message effectively conveyed. Oral oral communication may often give rise to confusion because every speaker has his own way of putting across expression. While well, speech is very personal written communication that rises above the person, especially in a business organization where precision is the norm. Number eight, permanent in nature. Written communication is permanent. The growth of an organization is promoted to a large extent by reference to its old, well maintained records and minutes of meetings. Number nine, Facilitates in order to assign responsibility. Written communication facilitates proper assigning of responsibilities. One may sometimes go back on the spoken word, but not on words which have been put on paper. Moreover, the lower staff behave, behaves with more responsibility and also feels secure when communication is sent in writing. There is greater persuasion and seriousness attached to something that is in writing. Number 10. Permits substitution and revision. While spoken words cannot be taken back or erased, since they have to be instantaneously and thoughtfully planned. Instantaneously and thoughtfully planned out. The sender of a written message gets time to conceive the idea and formulate his message after due substitution and revision of his text. Next topic, disadvantages of written communication. Like oral communication, even written communication is not free from demerits. Some of the major disadvantages of written communication are as follows. Number 1. Limited to literate world. Written communication is limited to literate people who have the capability to read and write. 
though in spite of literacy levels rising across the world there still remains a great chunk of people who are still devoid of this skill number 2 time consuming unlike oral communication written communication takes time to reach the target both encoding and transmission of the messages take time resulting in delays it is therefore a time consuming process postal delays cause a lot of time to be elapsed between dispatch of written messages and its received by the target number 3 lot of paper work written communication creates mountains of paper cluttered around the premises of an organization it is a common sight in offices and the staff has a tough time trying to handle it very often valuable papers get lost managers therefore have to be extra careful to keep sensitive and confidential material in their own custody number 4 needs expertise in expression written communication runs the risk of becoming effective in the hands of people otherwise good in their job but poor in expression that is why it is a serious concern of modern organization to recruit people who are very good in expression especially in letter and report writing ability number 5 lack of immediate feedback number 5 lack of immediate feedback then communication is mostly handicapped by its inability to get immediate feedback the receiver of the message takes his time to understand and respond to the message number 6 costly written communication is a costly process in terms of stationery and the number of people involved in typing and sending out letters number 7 more man hours needed by the same logic it is costly in terms of man hours lost in taking dictation typing entering in the diary dispatching etc the same job can be done more efficiently and expeditiously by harnessing modern technology like video conferencing computers and emails number 8 no immediate clarification written communication has another disadvantage if the receiver of a written message at a distance seeks some clarification he cannot have it as quickly as he would like to he will also have to write back and wait for the reply to his query immediate clarification is also not possible in the absence of written communication public speaking planning preparation and presentation public speaking is a form of communication in which a person speaks face to face to a relatively large audience in public speaking the speaker speaks in a fairly continuous manner further the focus of the event seems to be on a single product which is the speech itself those who communicate with large audiences most effectively however recognize that they are involved more with a process than simply with a product enhance public speaking skills by paying attention to first selection of topic next audience analysis next researching the topic next planning and drafting the speech next organizing the speech next presenting the speech verbal and non verbal next developing confidence and overcoming fear it is important to remember that although these are parts of a process there are no specific steps to follow in exact order ordinarily the speaker will not begin with one section finish it go on to the second section finish it and so on instead he might begin by analyzing the audience then choose a tentative topic topic and purpose do some planning and research narrow the topic think of a good idea for an introduction and write a draft and go back and analyze the audience once again he will undertake more research and so on next topic is selection of topic the speaker's first step in formal speech making is to determine the purpose and topic of his presentation in some cases he is assigned a topic 
usually one within his area of specialization. In fact, when he is asked to make a speech on a specific topic, it is likely to be based on his expert knowledge in that area. If the speaker is not assigned a topic, he must find one on his own. In his search for a suitable topic, he should acquaint himself with the following. Number one, background and knowledge. Any topic which he selects should be one with which he is comfortable, ensuring that it is within his area of proficiency. Number two, interest of his audience. Selecting something which his audience can appreciate and understand is vital to the success of one's speech. Number three, occasion of the speech or purpose of the speech. Is the occasion a common a commemoration of a historic event or a monthly meeting of an executive club, an annual meeting of an association of beauticians, etc. Whatever topic is selected, it should fit the occasion. A speech about automated banking technologies might be quite appropriate for a group of young entrepreneurs, but not for retired pensioners. The purpose of public speech is related to the occasion, and it is identified while selecting the topic. The purpose may be 1. To inform or instruct. Here the goal is to clarify, secure understanding and explain a process, issue or procedure. 2. To persuade. The goal here is to create willingness among the audience to accept the idea, proposal and claim as presented by the speaker. 3. To encourage. Here the goal is to raise the spirit of the audience, to motivate listeners and to inspire them. 4. To, to entertain. In social occasions, parties, anniversaries, cultural programs, etc., one may have to speak in order to entertain people. Next topic. Audience analysis. <laughs> One requirement of making a good speech is to know about the kind of audience available for the speech. The content and manner of presentation of speech will depend upon the kind of audience and their attributes like education, qualification, age, etc. The speaker should study his audience before and during the presentation in the manner narrated below. Preliminary analysis. In the analysis of the audience before the speech, the speaker should research for the audience's characteristics that will affect his presentation. For example, size of audience is likely to influence how formal or informal should the speech be. As a rule, large audiences require more formality. The audiences Personal characteristics also affect how one must structure the speech. Characteristics such as as sex, education, experience, and knowing the core topic can determine how a speaker presents his message through choice of words needed for illustrations and the level of details required. The speaker should adapt his speeches to suit his target audiences. This knowledge about the audience is the first step in adaptation. Number one, age. The following questions regarding age need to be addressed. One, what is the general age of the audience members? Two, how wide is the age range? Three, does the audience include different age groups who need to be addressed differently? Four, what effect might the age of the audience have on the topic and purpose? What are the main points which the speaker plans to speak on? It is important to understand the effect of as examples, illustrations and visual age which the speaker may seek further. As will also have an effect on the language which the speaker intends to use. Audience analyze Analysis is important. 
Age is the most important criteria and one should keep the following in mind. 1. Children may like stories. 2. High school children may prefer visual age. 3. College students need informative presentations. 4. Young adults want progressive and innovative viewpoints. 5. Middle-aged people tend to be conservative for they prefer status quo issues and listen to them with interest. 6. Old people may be interested in news and views. Number 2. Sex. The following questions relating to sex help the speaker to analyze the audience. 1. Does the audience comprise of all males and all females or predominantly one sex? 2. Do males and females view the topic differently? 3. Have they got different interests, experiences and knowledge about the topic? 4. How will this influence the way in which the speaker will develop his topic and purpose? Number 3. Background and Attitudes 1. How much knowledge or experience does the audience bring to this topic? 2. Do their experiences and opinions differ so much from the speaker that he must adjust the way and construct the speech accordingly? 3. Will the audience identify with the speaker or see the speaker as an outsider? 4. Does he expect the audience to be hostile even before he speaks to them? 5. What is the ethnic, racial and socio-economic composition of the audience? 6. What does this composition mean for his topic and purpose? 7. Are there any implications here for development of his speech? 4. Appearance. Appearance. Regarding appearance, the following questions are important. 1. Is his appearance similar to that of his audience? 2. Is he better or worse dressed, more formal or more casual than they are? 3. How are they likely to expect the speaker to be de dressed? 4. Whether their appearances in relation to the speaker cause him to feel inferior or superior? Number 5. Context. Two specific questions are considered in this context. They are 1. What about the place, time and occasion for his speech? 2. Do any of these impose restrictions on what his audience might consider appropriate or create expectations that he has to take into account? Analysis during presentation. Audience analysis continue as the speaker starts making his speech. This is also known as the feedback phase. This phase of audience this phase of audience analysis keeps the speaker information about how a listener is receiving his words. With this information, he can adjust his presentation to improve the communication result. The eyes and ears of the speaker will help him get this feedback information. Following is the checklist which may help the speaker to analyze the audience during the presentation. First, Facial expressions of the audience will tell him how listeners are reacting to the message. Next, from smiles, blank stares, and movement, he will get an indication of whether they understand or agree with the message or not. Next, from their sounds or silence, he can guess whether they are listening. Next, if questions are being asked by the audience in order, the speaker can learn how the message is coming across. Next, by being alert, the speaker can learn much from his audience and direct his speech accordingly. Next topic. Researching the topic. After the purpose of the speech is determined, the speaker should gather the information, which will form the basis of his speech. He may select the main ideas and then gather additional information that will be in support of the core area, core idea. In some cases, this involves mentally and logically 
by charging supporting experiences for development of ideas. Sometimes he will have to conduct primary research in a library or by running through company records. With some topics, he may need to consult colleagues or people from other companies. This list of core ideas may be gathered in a haphazard or disorganized manner. Later, the workable ideas can be put together into a unified team. In short, he has to do whatever is necessary to get the information he needs by organizing his speech. Once the speaker decides on a topic for his presentation, he can determine the main points that will serve as the basis of his speech. He can discover what they might be by simply asking him some questions about his presentation topic. A few of them are as follows. First, if his speech is informative, he will primarily ask what and how questions such as what are the main themes of this topic and how can he develop his theme. Next, if his speech is persuasive or intended to promote common feelings, he will ask more of why related questions such as number one, why the audience should be interested in this topic, two, why should they agree to what I say. Next, in developing the top points which he intends to make, he should always keep his audience in mind. First, who are they? Next, how much do they already know about his topic? Next, how do they think? Next, what do they think about his topic? If this audience is going to be interested in listening to him, he will need to adapt his speech to them and present them with new ideas or at least present old ideas in a new light. This kind of research on the topic and his audience will help the speaker to draft a speech and make an impressive presentation before his target audience. Next to planning and drafting. A clear vision of his objective and good amount of research on the topic will help the speaker to gather enough ideas to plan and draft his speech. When preparing for a public speech, a speaker should consult a wide variety of sources. When the research has been completed, the speaker should organize all information, arguments and evidence into a complete outline. Its purpose is to help the speaker to understand both sides of the speech issue. It also serves as a source of the specific information, which the speaker will include in the outline for his or her public speeches. Although variations are sometimes appropriate, usually he should follow the time-honored order in planning the speech. Number one, introduction. Number two, body. Number three, conclusion. Let us discuss in detail number one introduction. It is rightly said a good beginning is half ending and first impression is the last impression. So it becomes imperative that the speaker makes an impressive beginning to capture the attention of the audience. Regarding introduction, following is the order in which some tips would be. One, establish Report by making a reference to a chairman's remarks, b previous speaker's words, c occasion of meeting, d showing pleasure and happiness. Two focus attention on a raising possible questions, b listing to facts and figures, c creating a story, d making reference to famous personalities, e mention a proverb or a quotation related to the topic of the occasion. Other important points to be kept in mind regarding introduction are 1. Although not really a part of the speech, the first words usually spoken are the greetings. The greeting, of course, should fit the audience. Ladies and gentlemen is appropriate for a mixed audience. Gentlemen fits an all-male audience and my fellow Rotarians fits an audience comprising of the members of a Rotary club. 
to the introduction of a speech has the same importance as the introduction of a written report that is to prepare the lis listener or reader to receive the message but the introduction of a speech usually has the additional requirement of arousing interest unless the speaker can arouse interest at the beginning his presentation is likely to fail the situation is somewhat like that of the sales letter at least some of the people with whom he wants to communicate are unlikely to be interested in receiving his message three the techniques of attracting interest are limited only by the imagination in some cases beginning with a human interest story may be successful it is said that storytelling has a strong and universal appeal humor is another possibility and is probably the most widely used technique putting forward basic questions about the issue is also an important technique which involves the audience immediately immediately in fact when the audience gets interested in what he has to say he can be begin and skip the attention gaining opinion presentations of technical topics to technical audiences typically begin in such a way whether he leads to a statement of the topic or begins with it his statement should be clear and complete number 2 body body is the main part of the speech this contains the main contents for which the form the foundation of foundation has been laid by the introductory part of the speech the body of the speech is structured according to one purpose two audience the other points to be kept in mind are one begin with easy ideas and substitute difficult explanations with simpler ones to begin with acceptable ideas and move to newer ones three in incidents should be narrated at a faster pace three number three conclusion the conclusion should hold attention it may take the shape of a question or quotation only sentences should be and the concluding remarks should not be dragged the concluding observations are related to one summary of the main theme two repeat thanks for invitation three thank the audience four relate to the occasion thanks draft of debatable topics four debatable topics or issues the following parts of a brief may be considered number 1 statement of the proposition number 2 introduction 1 importance of the issue or topic 2 short history of the issue or topic 3 the main arguments will be brief and precise a list the common arguments for the affirmative style common arguments are that a proposed sense is needed the sense is practical it is desirable and that the advantages of making the sense are greater b list the common arguments for the negative side common arguments are that the proposed sense is not needed the sense is impractical and undesirable that the disadvantage of making the sense is greater and that there are so solutions which are better than those proposed by the affirmative side sometimes the speaker may find it undesirable to reveal a position because of the nature of the subject in these cases he may prefer to move into his subject indirectly and to build up his case before revealing his position he should show this inductive pattern especially when his goal is to persuade or when he needs to move his audience's views from one position to another but in most business related presentations a direct statement of the theme early in the speech would be desirable number 3 body 
this is the longest most detailed portion one state again each argument for the affirmative after each argument list the specific evidence that supports it cite also the source for each item of evidence two state again each argument for the negative after each argument list the specific evidence that supports it cite again the source for each item of evidence number four conclusion one summarize the position and arguments of the affirmative side to summarize the position and arguments of the negative side like most reports a speech usually ends with a conclusion here the speaker brings all that he has presented to the audience he achieves the speech goal and in doing so he should consider including these three elements in his closing remarks a a restatement of his subject b a summary of the conclusion or main message usually it is effective to bring the speech of a climactic close by summing up the high points of the speech he can do this by presenting the concluding message in strong language so that it may gain attention and be remembered next to be organizing the speech organizing the body of his speech is must like organizing the body of a report the speaker takes the entire text and divides it into comparable parts then he takes these parts and further divides them he continues to divide as far as is practical to do so in species however he is more likely to use factors as the basis of division then time place or quantity the reason is that in most species his presentation is likely to build around issues and questions that are subtopics of the subject even so subdivisions like time place and quantity are possibilities after preparing a brief of a presentation the speaker is ready to begin the preparation for presenting it the speaker will organize his presentation and presentation of speech on the basis of the following number 1 based on his own knowledge and interest does he still think the topics that he has selected will be interesting to the listeners and engaging to them this time ensure that the listener likes the topic number 2 if this is the first time the speaker has done research or if he has little knowledge of the topic he will begin by reading some general information taken from an encyclopedia or magazine article if he knows or can think of any persons who has specialized knowledge about the topic he must try to interview them specific notes are taken on what he reads and learns number 3 on piece of paper the speaker should write his presentation draft therefore he must review it for the speech perhaps it is something completely new from that he has already known or spoken on that does not matter what does matter is that it is truly the essence of what the speaker wants his audience to gain from the speech number 4 below his presentation draft he writes several questions about it leaving space under each question for an answer remember that if this speech is informative he will primarily ask what and how kind of questions if his speech is to be persuasive he will ask more of the questions number 5 now the speaker must answer each of these questions these answers will provide him with the key points or major elements later on this will form the basis of his speech number 6 when he has completed his presentation it should be shared with a partner or small group if not it should be revised as necessary 
Number 7. In the end, the speaker should speak the main points of his presentation draft. He needs to completely prepare his spe speech by carefully crafting his conclusions. He should wrap up his ideas and give his audience a sense of completion. It should emphasize his main idea, thesis, and summarize the main points. Next topic, organizing the speaking aids. Organizing the speech also includes putting all his points in a logical sequence and being ready for all queries that may be asked during the speech. While presenting a formal speech, the speaker prepares the manuscript of his speech, speaking notes and visual aids for the purpose of reference beforehand. There are a few guidelines to prepare these aids. These are as follows. Guidelines for a speech manuscript. A speech manuscript is a written document which contains the entire speech in a handwritten or printed format. The following points are important in this regard. Number one, the speech script should be printed on only one side of the paper or card sheet. Number two, both capital and lowercase letters may be used. Four important letters, all capital letters may be used. Number three, the text must have double or triple space. Number four, the pages should be appropriately numbered. Number five, as the speaker finishes reading each page, he may slide it to the side on the podium or shuffle it to the bottom of the stack of pages. Number six, eye contact is to be maintained with the audience. The speaker should look at them as often as possible without losing concentration. Number seven, the speaker must use pause at appropriate places. There is a tendency to speak too rapidly and run or overlap or repeat ideas together. While reading a manuscript, this needs to be avoided. Next topic. Guidelines for speaking notes. Usually, the speakers do not carry the whole speech to read. They only carry the main points jotted clearly on cards or paper. These notes are called speaker's note. Following are the important guidelines for notes to be prepared for public speech. Number one, the speaker has to prepare brief and concise notes. Notes should not distract the listeners. Index card of three into five inch are an ideal size and are stiff enough to be handled easily. Number two, he should print the information on the cards large enough so that it may be read at a glance from an arm's length. Number three, he should write on only one side of each card. Number four, he should limit the total number of cards to as few as possible. Number five, he should arrange his notes in such a way that the main ideas can be picked up and understood quickly. The points that the speaker wants to repeat or emphasize should be underlined, capitalized or colored. Number six, the cards must be numbered. The possibility of dropping the cards just before the speech should be controlled. Number seven, during the speech the card, cards should be kept in one hand in the most inconspicuous a manner as possible. If the speaker is using the podium, he may put the notes comfortably over there. Guidelines for using visual aids. Visual aids enhance the comprehension and attention of listeners. The following points, points are important in this regard. Number one, the speaker should feel that a visual aid is relevant and useful. If it is cleverly designed and attractively presented, it should be part of speech as well, not something tacked on it, tacked onto it. Number two, the aid is large enough so that the smallest details which the audience wants to see is visible in the room 
if the message of the aid is not clear then the aid is a distraction if the transparencies prepared are not neat they will lead to more distractions number 3 the speaker must make the edge neat and attractive it should be appealing enough to hold the attention of the audience but not so attractive that it engages them to the point of distraction he can use computer software to generate graphs and diagrams for example clip art he should remember that the speaker needs pixels that are large enough to be seen by everyone in the audience small computerized pixels that cannot be seen do not facilitate the presentation number 4 if the aid requires the use of special equipment such as a slide projector or a video tape recorder the speaker must make sure that he can operate the equipment just before his speech he should check them to make sure that the equipment is working properly number 5 he should indicate in this in his cards where in his speech he will use his aid and should also practice their use number 6 he should stand in such a way so that he is not blocking or distracting the audience's view of the aid number 7 he should not keep looking at the aid continuously as he talks he should point out his major features in the aid briefly at the same time he must keep his eyes on the audience to see whether they understands his speech and are with him number 8 he should be cautious about distributing materials to be looked at by listeners such activity will probably distract them from his speech instead of aiding communication he may however wish to distribute such materials after his speech next topic presentation of a well prepared speech can go waste if it is not presented well the success of all the efforts put in by the speaker depends on how skillfully he presents it at this point of time it will be important for him to decide his technique of presentation there are three methods of or ways of presenting a speech presenting presenting it extemporaneously by reading it or by memorizing it ways of delivering the speech extemporaneous presentation it is the most popular and effective method of presentation using this method the speaker initially prepares his speech then he prepares notes and presents the speech from them this allows him to have good eye contact while he may feel confident having the support of the notes with him number 2 memorize presentation it is the most difficult method of presentation for most of us probably a few speakers actually memorize an entire speech memorize speech does have poor display of non non verbal cues the fear of forgetting the speech in between is a big hurdle and does not allow the speaker to be at ease instead memorizing key parts and using notes to help through the presentation is a better option number 3 presentation by reading usually the inexperienced speakers use this method as lack of confidence does not allow them to memorize even a part of the speech unfortunately most of us do not read aloud well we tend to read in a dull monotone voice producing a most uninteresting and lackluster effect we fumble over words miss punctuation marks and make similar lapses many speakers overcome this problem with effort and eliminate it also while using any of these methods during the course of his presentation the speaker also has to be aware of how his audience is reacting to his speech as has already been discussed in the section about audience analysis the speaker's eyes and ears will give him feedback information for example facial expressions of the audience members will tell him how they are reacting to his messages from smile blind stares and movements the speaker will get an indication whether the listeners understand or agree with his messages 
Wording also includes non-verbal content. Important aspects related to presentation of speech. A few other aspects relating to presentation of the speech which the speaker should be aware of are number one, appearance and bodily actions. Since his listeners are listening to his words, their gaze is also directed at him. What they are seeing is also a constituent of the message and it can have much effect on the success of his speech. This audience sees the speaker and also what surrounds him. Thus, in his efforts to improve the effects of his oral presentations, the speaker should also pay attention to his appearance and bodily actions. Number two, the communication environment. A major chunk of what his audience sees is everything that is around him as he speaks. All of that tends to add to a general impression. This includes physical things like the stage, lighting and background and his own skill as a listener will tell him what he is important. Number three, personal appearance. The personal appearance of the speaker is part of the message. The audience receives most of the non-verbal cues from their making is necessary that he uses them appropriately. Specifically, he should dress appropriately for the audience and the occasion. Number four, posture. Posture or body position is likely to be the most obvious thing which the audience sees about him. Even if listeners cannot be close enough to detect facial expressions and eye movements, they can see in general the structure and state of the body. The speaker probably thinks that one should tell him what good posture is. He may know it when he sees himself. He should keep his body erect without appearing stiff and uncomfortable. His deportment should be poised, alert and communicative. He should be do all this naturally. The greatest danger with posture is appearing artificial. People may become too artificial by pretending or non-spontaneous by reading books on communication. Number 5. Walking. The way the speaker walks before his audience also makes an impression on his listeners. A strong and sure walk both gives an impression of confidence. Walking during the lesson can be both good and bad, depending on how the speaker does it through in public speech. We rarely find speakers walking. Number 6. Use of voice. Good and effective voice is an obvious requirement of good speaking. Like bodily movements, the voice should not hinder the listener's concentration of the message. Voices that cause such difficulties generally fall into four areas of it. Number 7. Avoid a few words or phrases. First, Latin and French words. Next, technical terms. Next, socially un unpleasant words. Number 4. Sip, hollow and slang terms. Next, difficult words. Next, repeating phrases like you see, you know, I mean, and such like. While actually delivering the speech, the speaker may make use of visual aids and notes or his own manuscript. The guidelines for using them have already been discussed in organizing the speech. Developing confidence and Overcoming Fear all steps narrated regarding public speaking will not give any result. If the speaker feels scared to face the audience, the speaker observes some signs of discomfort like increase in heart rate, rise in blood pressure, rise in body temperature, shivering of legs and hands, fumbling for words and sweating of palms. These are signs of nervousness and a lack of self-confidence. The reviews should help him to pinpoint problem areas and also give him practical suggestions to overcome them. Strategies to overcome stage fear. Fear is the manifestation of our own mind. A feeling that one knows the subject matter better than anyone else and that he is in charge 
infuse enough confidence in the speaker to overcome fear. St some strategies to overcome stage fear are as follows. Number one, know your subject well. Prepare with the attitude that you should know the subject better than anyone else. Number two, rehearse several times. At least a few complete rehearsals help to memorize the subject matter and be confident. They also help to improve the nonverbal part of the speech. Number three, check the equipment, the projector, screen, display board, etc. required during the speech should be checked prior to the speech. If at the time of the speech any of the equipment does not work, it leads to humiliation of the speaker and diminishing of impact on the audience. Number four, carry notes. The speaker's notes clearly written should be carried by the speaker for events before and during the speech. He, this helps to overcome nervousness. Number five, during the speech, some movement during the speech holds the attention of the audience and helps the speaker to release his stress. Number six, breathe deeply and slowly before speaking. A controlled breath helps to control the heartbeat and thus remove sign of nervousness. It also calms down the mind, thus preparing the speaker to face the audience. Number seven, maintain poise and enthusiasm. The speaker should maintain his poise, body posture, and should emanate a good level of enthusiasm from his body language. This will help him to be friendly towards the audience. Important qualities of a speaker. The speaker should possess the following qualities to be efficient and eloquent. Number one, confidence. Even the most conf confident of speakers exhibit nervousness whenever they occupy a stage for public speech. A primary characteristic of effective oral reporting is confidence. This includes his confidence in himself and his audience in him. Actually, the two are complementary to each other. For example, he can prepare his presentation diligently and practice it thoroughly. Such careful preliminary work would give him confidence in himself. Unfair and logical as it may be, certain style of dress and hair create a strong image in people's mind, minds. Thus, if he wants to communicate effectively, he should analyze the audience to whom he seeks to reach. He should work to develop the physical appearance that will project an image in which his audience can have confidence. Yet another suggestion is simply to talk in strong and clear tones. Such tones do a lot to project an image of confidence. Although most people can do little things their natural voices, they can try to add sufficient volume. Number two, sincerity. The speaker must be sincere for listeners. Always appreciate sincerely in the speaker. The listeners will be quick to detect insincerity in the speaker. When they do so, they are like to give little weight to the to what he says. He must make efforts to project an image of sincerity to succeed. Number three, thoroughness. The speaker must be thorough in regarding the subject matter of public speech. Thoroughness in his preparation will ensure that his message is better received than one, which is a hurried coverage. Thorough coverage gives the impression that he has taken proper time and adequate care and such an impression tends to make the message believable. But he must guard against overdoing thoroughness. Number four, friendliness. A speaker who projects an image of friendliness has a distinct advantage in communication. Like sincerity, friendliness is difficult to pretend. It must be honest if it is to be effective. But with most people, friendliness is an honest effort. 
therefore there are people who actually want to be friendly next handling questions most of the phobia comes from the questions raised by the audience the following guidelines will help one to answer questions effectively the speaker must carefully listen to the question raised number one he should be sure about his understanding of the question he should have clarity before he attempts to answer it if he is not sure what a question means ask the questioner to clarify it number two the speaker must be sure that the audience knows what question he is answering unless he is speaking to a very well group very small group the speaker must repeat his question before answering it. Number three, if a listener is asking several questions at a time, answer them one by one. If the answer to his first question is very long, the speaker can ask the listener to repeat his or her other questions. Number four, he should make his answers direct and understandable. He should limit his answer to the question which has been asked. Proper traditional language is to be used. Number five, he should ensure that the listener understands his answer. Number six, if the speaker does not know the answer to a question, he should clearly tell the audience so and should not bluff the listeners. Number seven, he should treat people who ask question with respect, even if they do not treat the speaker in that way. Number eight, rebuttal speech, a speech in which reputation is the primary activity usually each debater is given one constructive speech and later on one rebuttal speech presentation skills a presentation is essential for the students researchers and working managers in today's fast moving business environment if the presentation is effective it creates a good impression about the speaker and it clearly communicates the information. The presentation also reveals the attributes of the personality of the speaker. That is confidence, fluency, style, conducting discussion and debates. Business presentation differs from public speaking. The point of differences are aim of speaking business presentations to give the audience what they know they need in public speaking to give the audience what they believe they want point of difference type of audience in business presentations generally homogeneous in terms of their knowledge area of academic or professional interest etc in public speaking mostly heterogeneous Next point of difference, expectations of audience. In business presentations, complete details about topic. In public speaking, do not expect a lot of details. Next point of difference is amount of information. In business presentations, it is more. And in public speaking, it is less. Next point, point of difference, difference is level of interaction in business presentations more as the audience wishes to understand the topic thoroughly but in public speaking less as a general understanding is desired by the audience a presentation is a live mode of sharing information with a select audience it is a form of oral communication in which a person shares factual information with a particular audience we can define presentation as an oral activity that uses visual electronic aids to discuss new ideas and information with a specific audience in an impressive and convincing manner. Let us discuss the features of presentation. Number one, a presentation is not a lecture. Classrooms lecture have well educational objectives. Students raise questions and answer questions put by the teacher. A classroom lecture is ideally a two-way communication process, but presentations are one way. Initially, the audience sits through the listening, watching, and talking, taking notes. Number two, the focus is on persuading the listeners to buy the ideas that are shared. Number three, 
A presentation has a well-defined format. The audience sits through the delivery without interrupting the presenter. And after the completion of presentation, the audience is invited to ask questions or seek clarifications. Number four, a good presentation must cover the following aspects. One, there should be a clear structure with an introduction, discussion, and end. Two, the facts and figures should be visually present in tables, graphs, and such. Number three, the colors should be used to make the presentation of the contents attractive. Four, the presenter should show an understanding of the audience's needs and level of understanding while discussing his or her ideas. Five, humor and anecdotes should often be employed to create a good relationship with the audience. Six, questions should be given serious attention and must be regarded as an essential part of the presentation. Ten steps to a successful presentation. Step one, consider the occasion and objective. Purpose of this step is know the sphere and concretize ideas. Next step, step number two, make audience always make audience analysis. Purpose of it is meet demands of the audience. Step three, know about the location. Purpose, acquaint yourself with the venture organizations, etc. Step four, decide the mode and manner of presentation. Purpose, the attention of the receivers. Step five, prepare the script. Purpose, make a confident presentation. Step six, preparation of one, visual aids, two, handouts, three, feedback forms. Purposes, should generate interest increase retention assess competence step 7 rehearse Par brings perfection instills confidence step 8 consider personal aspects purpose be presentable in appearance step 9 overcome nervousness purpose be fearless and effective step 10 make the presentation purpose enables sharing of ideas, information and knowledge.